This is the story of a house named Shah Jahan. This house uh, has been uh, realized in 2010. So it's about a 12 year story by now. The house uh, has been essentially very sensitively handled through the way natural elements get incorporated in. Because this uh, house, uh, when built, was sitting in a suburban part of Barodra. So surrounding was little open and we wanted them to enjoy the openness that they can feel. So this is where, uh, in this plot, we tried to organize it in a way that everybody can just, uh, from every space, even though they are inside, can extend their views out, even not only uh, view, but even physically step out. Actually, it's a twin house in the sense that it's a father and son. They have everything going on common, but yet, if they want, they can both function independently. Essentially, it's a deep, long plot with a north entry. And as I said, that primary decision was to have two staggered masses, one being the parent house, the other being this. So because of this, now of course, there is a veranda here and there is a common entry point here. So this becomes a back private yard in the green. There's also a kind of kitchen garden, etc. here. And this is the arrival court. So again, that is the green. Then here, there is a water feature. And also at the entrance, so northeast is also good for water. So practically you have this water body, but there is a sort of a bridge, so you have you're walking over the water, so you become conscious of its presence. There is also a kind of a flowing water, so there is a sound value. Then you come in to the house. So it's not a drive-in porch, so to say, but you begin to transit from hustle, bustle into the nature, and then eventually you come into the home. After that, the organization around the courtyard, what I mean is that for this house, this becomes the kitchen and dining, while this becomes the family space in terms of uh, TV or the home theater. This becomes the bedroom. And this becomes the formal space being entered from here and here this has now a kind of a double height volume to which one of the jharokas the balcony of the uh, upper floor room overlooks and the interesting part is that this is that double heighted area which has a through and through puncture into the slab of course covered with the glass so as sun moves you can see the dynamics of the light and the shadow that it would keep shifting from here While for this house, similarly, this is the dining and kitchen. This one is the living room and their own bedroom, so that both of them, you know, they usually spend time in either of this and that opens out. And the veranda as a common feature here, which is a very large and very kind of lively space. All through the day, it remains shaded. Now this is the unification point, which is the veranda. This faces the garden, this faces the water body, which was actually used as a swimming pool. And this has a kind of vegetation all around it. The older parents house is predominated by expression of a brick. As against the younger couples house has a larger proportion of the exposed concrete. 
there has been some kind of principle followed in terms of vegetation. One, there must be seasonal blooming perceived. So the second principle is uh, from seasonal blooming to three-dimensional plantings. So even in a small area, you have layered plantings. So you have grass cover, then you have small shrub, then you have small tree, and behind that you have a tall tree. This house has tried to basically reinterpret traditional wisdom in a very contemporary way. So rather than being gadget savvy, it has basically tried to evolve its own architecture, its own layout, its own kind of detailing through the very fundamental concerns of environment function as well as through that emerging aesthetic.